Stacy has just moved to a new town to start a new life. Her real estate agent has offered her four houses for rent. Can you help Stacy find the perfect one? The first house has uneven floors. The second one is standing too close to a fast food restaurant. There might be too much noise and different unpleasant smells. The fourth house is haunted. Look at the portraits on the walls. They're moving. Also, there's a ghost reflected in the mirror. But the third house looks pretty cozy and safe. As soon as Stacy moved in, she received three welcome cakes from her neighbors. But there's only one edible cake among them. Can you help Stacy recognize it? There are not only berries, but also a cockroach on top of the first pie. Ew. There's a human tooth hidden in the coconut flakes on the third cake. And the second cake looks good, even though its color is rather weird. Stacy invited her neighbors for dinner to get to know each other. She showed the guests her unique ruby that she had found in Thailand. Everyone had a lot of fun. But when the guests left, Stacy noticed that the ruby was gone. She called the police and showed them the pictures from the party. Who stole the ruby? This guy, he hid the precious stone under his head. Stacy got an invitation to a barbecue party, but when she arrived at the location, something scared her very much. The house was full of rats. How many rats can you spot? The correct number is 13. Stacy heard some music and walked around the house. In the backyard, she saw a campfire party. Everyone roasted marshmallows and told horror stories. Stacy wanted to join, but she noticed one creepy detail and decided to go home instead. Why? This guy doesn't have a shadow. He's a vampire. The next morning, the vampire guy, whose name was Luke, came over to Stacy. He explained that their town was quite unusual. Most citizens were zombies, mermaids, vampires, elves, and werewolves. But all of them got along really well. Luke took Stacy for a walk to show her the town. She got hungry, and they went to the local restaurant. Can you help Stacy spot a zombie among these customers? This woman over there. Take a look at her food. There are worms in her noodles. After lunch, Luke confessed that he liked Stacy and invited her on a date. He was very attractive, so Stacy said, Okay, but first, you gotta crack my riddle. The things I bite, they don't bleed. I don't bite until you push me. I bring something together every time I bite. But it comes undone again if you pull it just right. What am I? Luke gave his answer, and they went on a date. What did he say? I'm a stapler. Luke and Stacy went to see a movie and chose a scary one. They sat in the middle of the empty theater. After a while, Luke pointed at the screen. He was very scared. Stacy also noticed one creepy detail. What scared the couple so much? Since Luke is a vampire, there should be only one shadow on the screen. Stacy's. But look, there are two shadows. They're not alone. Next morning, Stacy went shopping. The local supermarkets offered plenty of weird stuff for zombies, werewolves, and other creatures. Can you help Stacy choose the right milk? We can see milk number one in this zombie's basket, so it's probably not good for humans. Milk number two is standing on the shelf with the inscription, for elves only. So the best option for Stacy is milk number three. In the parking lot, a thief stole Stacy's bag and escaped on a motorcycle. Stacy got into her car and drove after him, but she got stuck in a traffic jam. Finally, she reached a crossroads. She saw a traffic officer there. Stacy asked if he'd seen a biker in the past hour. The officer said, I haven't seen any today. Look at the camera pics of three main roads. No one has driven down the first road for an hour. Two mounted police officers have traveled down the second road. And only one blue truck has driven down the third road. Which way did the criminal go? He chose the third road. He hid inside the truck. The police in the town liked Stacy's way of thinking very much and offered her a job as a detective. 
she received her first task immediately. A dangerous criminal escaped from prison. Stacy had to catch him. The evidence led her to a farm. She saw a man working in the field. Detective Stacy asked him if he had seen any strangers around. The farmer said, Sorry, I didn't focus on what was going on around. Stacy immediately guessed that he was the criminal. How? If he's a farmer, why has he ruined the crops? She tried to stop the man, but he escaped again. Stacy continued chasing the criminal. Suddenly, she saw a house and entered it. The owner was inside. Stacy asked him, Has anyone visited you today? He said, No, neither have I left the house. Then Stacy asked, Do you live with your family? The man said he lived on his own. By that point, Stacy had already figured out that the guy was a liar. How did she guess? There are two cups of coffee on the table, and a wet umbrella is standing near the door. Stacy realized the guy was wasting her time on purpose to let the criminal escape. Suddenly, she received a message from her colleague. People had seen the criminal at the local shopping mall. He was hiding in the ladies' bathroom. Stacy knew exactly where he was hiding as soon as she got there. Can you see the criminal? He's over there. The guy managed to escape from Stacy through the window. He ran to a crowded street. Stacy followed him. Can you help her find the criminal? There he is. After a hard day, Stacy drove up to a gas station to fill up the tank. She paid for the gas, she left. Soon she noticed that a car was following her. She didn't know the driver, and she didn't recognize the car. So she tried to get away from him. She took sudden turns and accelerated, but it was useless. Finally, she reached the police station. Stacy was shocked to see that the man had followed her there. He wasn't a police officer, and everything was okay with her car. Why did he follow Stacy? The man saw a vampire hiding in the back of Stacy's car. Luckily, the vampire turned out to be Luke. He just wanted to surprise his girlfriend. He gave Stacy beautiful flowers and invited her over for dinner. His house looked gloomy, but chic. Stacy was very impressed and told Luke, Your art collection is stunning. But Luke confessed, In fact, there's only one really ancient portrait on this wall. Can you guess which one? This guy is wearing a fitness tracker. There's a selfie ring in the background of the second portrait. It means that only the third portrait is really old. Stacy entered Luke's kitchen and began to scream. The room was full of huge creepy spiders. How many spiders can you count? The correct answer is 16. Luke said, no worries, they're my friends. He introduced Stacy to each of his 16 pets and showed her the way to the living room. After dinner, Luke took out a box, a gift for Stacy. He said, I'll give you this precious piece of jewelry if you figure out my riddle. I'm tall and twisted, narrow and fast. I'm here for a moment, but my devastation lasts. What am I? A minute later, Stacy became the owner of a beautiful pearl necklace. What did she say? A tornado. Luke and Stacy were dancing. Suddenly, they heard the sound of glass shattering from the kitchen. Someone broke the window and wrote, You will regret it on the wall. Stacy questioned three witnesses. A ghost named Eddie said he'd been taking a bath and hadn't heard any noise. Luke's ex-girlfriend, Nora, said she'd been at home, knitting a sweater. Werewolf Fred said that he'd seen a strange shadow moving towards Luke's house. Who's lying? Eddie, if he's a ghost, why would he take a bath? The next day, Stacy came to the pier to have a boat ride with Luke, but she didn't see him. Only a group of suspicious people standing on the shore. She stopped and got out of her car. The people noticed her and ran in the opposite direction. She ran after them but couldn't catch up. She looked around and realized that those people were actually ghosts. How did she figure it out? When Stacy was chasing them, she was running on the sand. But now, she can see only the footprints of her own shoes. Suddenly, someone pushed Stacy into the water. 
Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife. She had recently lost it, and Luke found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife? The third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. When Stacy gave the necklace to its rightful owner, Neptune snapped his fingers. His guards brought Luke. Neptune said, I'll let you go home safely, but you have to choose the right door. There were demons behind the first door. They were ready to eat anyone who dared to come in. There was lava all over the floor of the room behind the second door. And finally, there was a laser beam that could cut through anything it touched behind the third door. Which door should Stacy and Luke choose? The third one. They can crawl under the beam without touching it. Sheila participates in a beauty pageant. The next catwalk will take place in 30 minutes. Sheila leaves her stuff in the dressing room and goes outside to talk on the phone. After that, she returns and sees that someone has torn her costume. Sheila gets furious and questions her rivals. Millie says, I was getting my makeup done, so I sat in my chair motionless and I couldn't look around. Chelsea says, I was in a toilet. I think I ate something wrong for lunch. And Isabella says, I was outside the dressing room filming stories for my subscribers. Who is lying? Millie. She said she got her makeup done, but why did she ruin it by putting on a face mask? Sheila goes to the storage room to find a new dress. Suddenly, the door slams shut behind her. Oh, no. She needs to enter an eight-letter password to open the door. Sheila needs to be on the stage in five minutes. Can you help her crack the code? This picture on the wall is a hint. Sheila needs to enter paradise. Sheila opens the door and meets face to face with creepy rats. She runs away and gets lost in the basement. Sheila finds these three doors leading to the stage, but each door is hiding some danger. There are broken wires and a puddle of water on the floor behind the first door. There's a scorpion behind the second door waiting to bite Sheila. And there's a magical portal leading to the top of a mountain behind the third door. Can you help Sheila make the right choice? She should choose the first door. There's enough space. Sheila can crawl underneath the wires. Sheila enters the stage and spots three uh -oh. weird details in the auditorium. Can you see them too? Take a closer look at this lady. She's holding a book upside down. This musician is playing the violin without any strings. Also, there's a panda among the viewers. Sheila becomes a beauty queen. She gets a diamond tiara and a paycheck. She goes backstage, but suddenly all lights in the building go out for a few seconds. When the lights turn on again, oh, no. Sheila sees that someone has stolen her tiara. She questions three rivals. Zoe says, I don't want your cheap tiara. My dad is a billionaire. Jasmine says, Someone pushed me in the dark and scratched my dress. Rachel says, You must have dropped it on the floor. Look better. Who stole the tiara? Zoe, it's hidden under her diamond necklace. The next day, Sheila wakes up in a creepy castle. A wicked witch turned her into a monkey. To break the black magic, Sheila needs to use a spell. But the spell book is locked in a box. The lock requires a six digit code. Can you help her open the box? <laughs> the 
there are exactly six candles on the shelf above the box. It's a hint. Each candle has a particular number of dots, so the code is 243621. There are four big houses in Sheila's neighborhood. All four are standing in one row and they have different colors, red, green, white, and blue. Mrs. Jones's house is somewhere to the left of the green house. The third house in the row is white. Mrs. Snake owns a red house and Mrs. Crystal doesn't live at either end of the row, but she lives somewhere to the right of the blue house. Meanwhile, Mrs. Dillon lives in the fourth house. And the first house isn't red. Can you decide who lives where and what the color of each person's house is? From the clues, we know that the first and the third houses can't be red. Mrs. Dillon lives in the fourth house. Therefore, Mrs. Snake, who owns the red house, can only live in the second. Since Mrs. Crystal doesn't live at either end, she must live in the third house, which is white. Mrs. Jones's house is somewhere to the left of the greenhouse, which means that Mrs. Dillon lives in the fourth house. As for Mrs. Jones, she lives in the first house, and it's blue. Can you spot a fake teacher? The guy on the left isn't a real teacher, he's an actor. Take a closer look. There's a rec camera icon at the top of the screen. Two friends want to cross a river. The only way to get to the other side is by boat. But this boat can only take one person at a time. The boat cannot return on its own, and there are no ropes or any other similar tricks. Yet both guys manage to cross the river using the boat. How is that possible? The guy started on the opposite banks of the river. Josh and Bob are twins. Josh lives with his wife, and Bob lives alone. Can you guess which one is Josh? It's the first guy. He has a pair of toothbrushes in his bathroom, while Bob only has one. A time traveler is attending this party. Can you spot this person? This lady's shoes look too old-fashioned. Chuck enters a spooky building where he's supposed to have a job interview. Suddenly, someone locks the door and now Chuck is trapped. He wanders around for a while and sees these four doors. He also finds a note. Only door three is leading to the job interview. The remaining doors will take you to the black hole. Good luck. Can you help Chuck choose the right door? No need for luck, Chuck. The symbols on the door are actually numbers. So Chuck should enter this door. I talk to you, you talk to me. Every day, you hold me, yet I can't smell you. What am I? I'm your mobile phone. A gentleman and a lady are talking. The person with black hair says, I'm a gentleman. The person with blonde hair says, I'm a lady. At least one of them lied. Can you guess the hair color of each person? If only one of them lied, they would both be gentlemen or both be ladies. Therefore, they both lie. It means that the lady has black hair and the gentleman is blonde. Can you spot what's wrong in this picture? There's no milk in the jug. Can you see anything odd in this picture?
the image in the mirror is not reflected. Can you spot a vampire? This guy over here. Fiona is a young witch. She finds these four portals in a haunted castle. Fiona chooses one of the portals and enters. You can hear city noises from the first portal. You can hear sea waves from the second portal. You can hear leaves rustling from the third portal. And bells are ringing from the fourth. Which portal did Fiona enter? Fiona's dirty footprints on the floor are leading to the third portal. Don't mind the different sounds, this could just be a magic trick. Billy finds himself on the roof of a skyscraper that is about to crumble. The only way out uh -oh. is to use one of these four elevators. There's a werewolf hiding behind the first elevator. If Billy chooses the second elevator, he'll fall hundreds of feet. Super venomous snakes are crawling all over the third elevator. And mutated scorpions are waiting for Billy inside the fourth elevator. Just one bite will make him fall uh -oh. asleep forever. Which way should Billy choose? The first one. Take a look at the sky. The moon is not full. So the werewolf is harmless. Rachel meets three of her former school friends in the parking lot. All three want to impress Rachel. So they begin to discuss their new cars. Melanie says, I wanted my car to be one of a kind, so I bought this one. Peter says, Since I'm a beginner, I purchased the cheapest used car. And finally, Samantha says, I bought a large car because I have a big family. Rachel spots a liar right away. What about you? It's Samantha. Her car key doesn't match the logo on the car. Hello. Dana is a swimming champion, preparing for her competitions on Monday. 24 hours before the big day, she disappears. Nobody can find her, and the police suspect three other swimmers. Hmm. Hannah says she hasn't spoken to Dana since their last practice. Ashley explains that she invited Dana for lunch on Saturday, but the missing swimmer refused because she was getting her hair done for the competition. Hmm. And Melanie says that she spoke to Dana the night before. Dana told her she was feeling anxious before the race. One of the swimmers is lying. Who is it? <laughs> Ashley knows where Dana is. Ah. It doesn't make sense for a swimmer to have her hair done before a competition. Laura was walking home from work when she heard screams coming from a nearby house. She immediately rushed in to help. She followed the voice and it guided her to a basement. As soon as she walked in, the door slammed shut. Three portals opened in front of her. Only one of them led to safety. The first portal was filled with giant venomous spiders. In the second portal, there was a huge suspended rock that was supposed to crash down the moment someone stepped in. In the third portal, seven hungry crocodiles were waiting for their next victim. Can you help Laura choose the right portal? Laura should pick the second portal. She can throw her shoes inside, wait for the giant stone to fall to the ground, and make her way around it. Daniel is a sailor on a large cruise ship. One day, the captain asked him to go to the hold and get some supplies. But as the man was walking down the ladder, it broke. Try as he might, he couldn't get out. Sometime later, he discovered there was a hole in the side of the ship. More and more water was getting inside through this hole. How can Daniel get out? He can put on one of the life jackets that are in the room and wait for the water to fill the hole. This water will lift him and he'll be able to push the door open. Look at this man and three women attentively. 
Can you figure out which one of them is his real wife? It must be the girl on the left. Look, unlike the other two girls, she has nothing in her hands. At the same time, the man is holding a purse, which, if we're honest, doesn't match his style at all. Ben and his girlfriend, Amelie, went to explore a cave and got lost. After some time, they came across two people, a guy and a young woman. The man, bearded and rough looking, had a shovel in his hands. I've been stuck here for a week. I know how to get to the surface, but I need your help. Come with me. The young woman exclaimed, Don't trust him. He's a criminal. Oh no. Follow me. I've been stuck here for way longer than him, but I think I know where the exit is. Hmm. Who should Ben and Amelie believe? Ben and Amelie decided to follow the man. If the girl had been in the cave for so long, why did she look so tidy and have fresh flowers in her hair? Look at this image. Can you figure out who came from the past? It's this guy. Take a closer look at his chest. He's wearing a shirt frill. Those were popular in the 19th century. How about this picture? Who's from the past? I bet it's this young girl. Look at her weird hat. And now, will you be able to spot the time traveler? It's this lady. Have a look. She's wearing clogs. Nature photographer Lydia was out taking pictures of trees and flowers in the park. She stopped when she noticed some weird chemical smell in the air. She took photos of all three factories in the area. When Lydia looked at the images later, she immediately realized which factory emitted toxic gas. Can you figure it out too? It's not the first factory. It seems abandoned. The second one is surrounded by trees and flowers. It means the smoke coming out of its funnels is safe. It's the third factory that's the toxic one. The trees around it look dry and unhealthy, and the flowers have turned black. At the airport, a furious traveler claimed that the contents of his baggage had disappeared. When I got my suitcase, it was empty. I want compensation. After checking the passenger's info, an airport worker found out that he had indeed left London with a heavy suitcase. And now his bag was empty and a bit wet. But don't you think the whole situation is a bit suspicious? Hmm. Can you figure out what probably happened here? The passenger left London with a suitcase full of ice. During the flight, the ice melted and the water leaked out and the man demanded compensation for his lost belongings. Lauren cooked 10 buckets of chicken wings for a family gathering, one for each guest. But later, it turned out that Jimmy hadn't gotten his portion. Someone had taken two buckets. Is it Uncle Patrick? He looks suspicious. Or maybe it's Lauren's son, Justin. He's wearing this creepy knowing smile. Or could Jimmy himself hide his chicken wings to get another portion? <laughs> what do you think? Where are the wings? Look at the dog! It wouldn't leave Uncle Patrick's side. It can smell the meat the man has hidden. Damien was at work when he found out he'd won the lottery jackpot. He told his accountant he wanted to give half of this money to his best friend, Logan. Yeah. But random people started showing up in the office calling themselves Logan to deceive the accountant and get the money. Ooh. Can you figure out who the real best friend is? Ooh. 
It's the guy wearing a matching bracelet with Damien. Oh, yeah. Emily was standing on one side of the river, and Anna was on the other. Anna shouted to Emily to come and meet her, and Emily did that. There was no bridge across the river, but she crossed it anyway without even getting wet. Hello. How did she do it? The river was frozen. Three people were stopped at the security check in an international airport. They were suspected of smuggling different stuff out of the country. The first man was heading to a beach resort. In his suitcase, there was a lot of stuff you could use at the seaside. An umbrella, a pair of sunglasses, sunscreen, and a beach towel. The second man had a cage with three colorful birds and a pet carrier with a family of hamsters. He had all the necessary papers. The third man was traveling for business. In his bag, he had a suit, some documents, a toothbrush, toothpaste, and a bottle of expensive shampoo. Who's the smuggler? It's the third guy. He's bald. Why would he need this shampoo? Five men were fishing in a boat not far from the shore. A big wave turned the boat over and all the men fell into the water. And still, not a single man got wet. How come? All the men were happily married. Stephen was driving to work when he realized he had left a folder with important documents at home. Oh, no. It was about 9 a.m. when he entered his house and saw a man leaving through the back door and running to a red car. Stephen called the police and told them about what had happened. Oh, no. Police officers didn't waste time and went to look for the criminal. After searching for 10 minutes, they spotted a similar looking car near a cafe. When they entered the place, there was only one customer there. One of the police officers came up to him. Is it your car? Where were you 20 minutes ago? The customer answered. Yeah, the car's mine, but I've been sitting here for more than an hour. The police officer immediately arrested him. Can you figure out why? The police officer noticed that the cafe only opened at 9 a.m., the guy couldn't have spent an hour there. Sarah accidentally pulled a lever in a science lab and set free a group of mutant zombies. The four humans left in the lab needed to escape before the zombies caught up. To do so, they needed to cross an old rope bridge hanging over a massive gorge. According to the professor's calculations, the zombies would catch up with the lab team in 17 minutes. They needed to get everyone across the bridge before that. Sarah was the fastest one in the group. She could cross the bridge in one minute. The lab assistant, Dawn, could cross it in two minutes. But the janitor and the professor were way slower. The first needed five minutes, and the second needed ten minutes to get to the other side. They also only had one lantern left. How could they arrive at the other side safely if the bridge could only hold two people at a time and each group needed to carry the lantern to illuminate the way? Here's how it works. Sarah and Dawn cross the bridge first, carrying the lantern. It takes them two minutes. Sarah, the quickest, runs back with the lantern. Then, the professor and the janitor cross the bridge together. It takes them 10 minutes. In total, it takes 13 minutes. Dawn grabs the lantern from them and dashes across the bridge to help Sarah get across. With two minutes left on the clock, Sarah and Dawn get safely to the other side just in time to cut the rope and save their lives. <laughs> Helena finally got herself a new guitar. She wanted to start playing it right away, but she had to go to school. She locked the instrument in her room and left. When she got home that evening, the guitar was gone. She knew it must have been one of her family members as they were always playing pranks on each other. So she questioned each of them. Helena's mother said she hadn't even seen the guitar the girl had bought. 
Her dad said he'd seen it when he'd passed by Helena's room, but swore he hadn't done anything to it. Her brother said he hadn't gone upstairs the whole day, so he hadn't seen the guitar either. Helena solved the mystery right away. Can you figure it out? Her dad is lying. He said he'd seen the guitar when passing by her room, but that would be impossible. Helena locked the door on the way out. John, Carl, and Ben are sitting on a park bench. One of them arranged to meet his two sisters. He promised them he would take them on a stroll in the park. Can you tell which guy it is? It's Ben. Look at his wrist. He's wearing two bracelets, probably made by his younger sisters. Josh was walking in a forest at night and came across an old castle. He was curious, so he found a way to sneak in and started walking down a corridor. Pretty soon, he met three cloaked figures. When Josh asked them who they were, they said they were two werewolves and one vampire. The trio told Josh that he had made a bad choice coming inside the castle. They said they wouldn't leave him unless Josh outsmarted them. Josh had to guess who the vampire was. According to the rules, he was only allowed to ask each of them the same question, and the question couldn't be, are you a vampire? After a few minutes of thinking, Josh asked, what's your eye color? He guessed who the vampire was and was allowed to leave the castle. Why did he ask that? And how did that question help him? Vampires don't reflect in mirrors, and they don't show up in photos. The vampire probably wouldn't know their eye color. One afternoon, four friends met up for coffee. Someone asked them how old they were, and they answered with a riddle. They said Mia was three times older than Anna, but three years ago, Anna was younger than Claudia is now, and Olivia is twice as old as Anna. So, can you put the girls in order according to their age? The correct order is Mia, Olivia, Anna, and Claudia. Mary's birthday was coming up, and she decided to treat herself to a relaxing day at the spa. During the massage, Mary dozed off. When she woke up, the money was missing from her purse. There were three suspects. The cashier, Erica, claimed that she'd been having lunch at the back. Catherine, the masseuse, said, I went to the back of the store to get some extra oil. Monica, a customer, said she hadn't seen anything and had just been waiting for her turn. What do you say, Sherlock? Who did it? The culprit is Catherine, the masseuse. She must have waited for Mary to fall asleep and then took her things. Look at the stash of money hidden behind the oils. Susanna was walking down the street when she saw a small dog. It looked as if the dog had just run away, so she picked it up and started searching for its owner. She walked into an office building. There were three people there. Susanna knew immediately who the dog's owner was. How did she figure it out? Look at the guy in the middle. He's sitting on a dog's leash. You've just come back from a long trip. You had to get a new suitcase to store all the things you bought. But after arriving home, you realize you've forgotten the code you need to open the suitcase. Luckily, you left yourself a note on your cell phone that can help you decipher the code on the lock. 682. One digit is correct and in the right place. 614. One digit is correct, but in the wrong place. 206. Two digits are correct, but in the wrong place. 
768. All digits are wrong. 380. One digit is right, but in the wrong place. What's the three-digit code? Zero four two. One morning, Detective Smith arrived at the jail where three men had escaped from their cells. The prisoners could neither see nor talk to each other, but they managed to organize their escape together. They visited the same shower room, but only one person was allowed to come in at a time. How did they manage to communicate? They wrote messages to one another on the bathroom mirror, used the steam to read them, and planned their escape together. On a Sunday morning, seven friends went to the mall. Esme, Evelyn, and Elise grabbed a cup of coffee each, while Ava, Ella, and Emma decided to drink some refreshing soda. Can you figure out if Esther chose to drink coffee or soda? Esther is drinking coffee. The secret to figuring out the answer is in the girls' names. Esme, Evelyn, Elise, and Esther all have two-letter E's in their names. In the afternoon, three people visited Tessa's clothing store. These three people were the only customers she had that day. The first person bought a belt and a purse. The second person bought a dress. And the third customer got a hat. One of them was a criminal, and Tessa reported them to the police immediately. Who was the criminal, and how did Tessa know? The third person gave her a $1,000 bill, but such bills don't exist. At 11 a.m., Amy got a call from her boss, Tom. He was in distress because a very important document had disappeared from his office. It had been on the desk the evening before, but nowhere to be found in the morning. Amy immediately went there to question the employees. She soon had three suspects. Elijah said he had spent the previous evening in the movies. Mason took his girlfriend to dinner. And Evelyn visited an art gallery. It didn't take Amy long to understand who was lying. Can you figure it out? It was Elijah. Take a close look at his ticket. It isn't torn, which means he didn't really go to the movies. James is a famous blogger. He arrives at an abandoned haunted castle to film a video. James hasn't even entered the house yet but he has already spotted five weird things about this place and freaked out. Can you see them too? These footprints on the ground are too giant. It's winter, but this cherry tree is blooming. It should be the moon in the sky, not Saturn. Also, this black cat has four paws, but leaves footprints from only three. James walks around the castle and gets lost in the garden maze. But in a while, he arrives at the front doors. Can you guess which way brought James here? Here's the only way to cross the maze. Unfortunately, the doors are locked. James needs to enter a four-digit code. Can you find any clues? Take a closer look at the door. There are four stars painted on it. The first one has five rays, the second has four rays, the third one, nine, and finally, the fourth one has seven rays. Therefore, the correct code is 5497. James enters the castle. It's very dark. Suddenly, someone grabs his camera and runs away to the library. James follows the thief. In the library, he faces a werewolf, a vampire, and a lady ghost. James questions them all. 
The werewolf says, I only come here for magic books to find a way to become human again. I'm not involved in the robbery. The lady ghost says, Someone spilled cherry juice on my favorite dress. I spent an hour in the bathroom trying to clean it. I didn't see anything suspicious. And the vampire says, It's early evening now. I got up just a minute ago. Why would I need your camera anyway? Who is lying? You cannot spill juice on a ghost. Therefore, she's lying. James enters another creepy room full of mirrors, but only one of them is fake. Can you help James find his real reflection? Only the second mirror shows the truth. Oh, yeah. James enters the toilet room, but all cabins are occupied. Can you spot a zombie among the visitors? The zombie is behind the left door. See the hands? They are greenish. Suddenly, James finds an invitation card for a party. The castle owner, Luna, is having a birthday. James enters the main hall and sees seven pretty witches sitting by the table. All look very similar, but each witch is wearing an outfit of a different color. It's very hard to tell who's the birthday lady, but after a couple of seconds, James approaches one of the witches, shakes her hand, and says, Thank you for inviting me over, Luna. How did he guess? Take a look at these gifts. Each witch brought a box wrapped in the color of her outfit. But the green box is absent because Luna is wearing the green dress. <laughs> Luna leads James to a company of four ghosts and says, Welcome, stranger. Meet my granny. Can you help James find out Luna's actual grandmother? It's the third ghost. She's wearing the same brooch as Luna. One of the witches, Zelda, likes James and wants to impress him. She shows him some pictures of her fabulous vacation, but James spots fake right away. How? Hmm. Take a look at the angle of the shadows in this picture. It's obvious that Zelda has photoshopped herself over this fancy beach view. Uh -huh. In the middle of the party, Luna gets a message from her boyfriend, Carl. He lives alone only 20 minutes away from the castle. Here's what he sends. Sorry for being late, honey. I'm still working. Luna yells, liar, and blocks him. Why? It's because of his selfie. There's a lipstick mark on the glass in the kitchen. Luna breaks up with Carl and uses a magic spell to teleport three handsome wizards to her dinner. When they arrive, Luna asks them just one question. Do you guys have a girlfriend? Hmm. Magnus replies, Lady, I work around the clock. I'm too busy for romance. Tristan says, Oh no, I've never had any serious relationships. Mm -hmm. Ambrose replies, Nah, I'm too picky. I'm still searching for the one. Mm. Two guys are lying. Can you guess who? Magnus, there's a romantic tattoo with a female name on his chest. And Tristan, he has a tan line around his ring finger. Therefore, he had been wearing a wedding ring. <laughs> James goes to the kitchen to help Luna with coffee. He spots three odd things right away. Oh. Can you see them too? The candle flame painted on the canvas is moving. There's a zombie hiding on the shelf behind the jars. Oh. And also, Luna puts salt in the coffee pot. <laughs> Luna comes back to the hall and sees that someone had scratched her favorite oil painting on the wall. She interrogates four suspects among her guests. Hmm. Magnus says, Whoa, I haven't even noticed the painting. Sophia says, Sorry, I was having a phone call. Zelda says, No worries, honey. I can paint you a new one better than this. And Glinda says, I was in the bathroom. I don't know who ruined the painting. Who is guilty? Glinda. Her nail polish has the same color as the scratches on the painting. 
Luna takes James to the garden and turns him into stone. Can you find the enchanted James among these three statues? There shouldn't be any grass under a real statue. Meanwhile, James has only been a stone for a few minutes. Therefore, we need to choose the only statue with grass underneath. James asks Luna to let him go. She says, okay, but first, you should crack my riddle. If I had three watermelons and four oranges in one hand, and four watermelons and three oranges in the other hand, what would I have? Can you help James figure it out? To solve this riddle, we need to think literally. The correct answer is, she would have very large hands. James wakes up in a dusty basement. He wanders around and finds three doors, but each way is guarded by a creepy magical creature. A hungry vampire is hiding behind the first door, and a fire-breathing dragon is waiting behind the second door, and there's a giant mutant rat behind the third door. Can you help James choose the best option? James should choose the first door. Take a look at the window. It's already dawn, which means the vampire is sleeping. James gets out of the castle and walks home. Suddenly, he spots a suspicious guy with a huge bag nearby a luxurious mansion. Hmm. James decides to question the guy. He says it was his house, and he carried his old stuff to give it away for charity. James calls the police right away. Why? Take a look at the window. The glass is broken and the guy's coat is torn. Why would he need to leave his own house through the broken window? Therefore, he's probably a thief. Oh. Finally, James arrives home. He checks his emails and finds three letters from different witches. Linda offers him to study at her magic school. Zelda invites James to visit her villa in Antarctica. And Sophia invites him on a date. But only one of these emails isn't fake. Can you find it? Linda's email is just spam. She doesn't mention his name in the message, and it also contains a suspicious link. Zelda sends him a picture of her villa, but it's clearly not in Antarctica, so only Sophia's email is real. James agrees to go on a date. He arrives at the meeting point and faces not one Sophia, but five. Unfortunately, a wicked wizard had cloned her. He tells James, you only have one chance to choose the real Sophia. If you succeed, I'm gonna let her go. Can you help James? The first lady has gills, so she's probably fake. The second one's teeth are too sketchy. The fourth Sophia has two left hands, and the fifth one has lilac eyes, while the real Sophia's eyes are green. Therefore, James should choose the third lady.